Okay, there's this one from back a long time ago when I lived in Nigeria in a place called Nsuka. That's a university town. So my dad taught there. And um, so it's a period when we had this dog and <laughs> the gate was open. I don't know what, it, usually the, the back part, the gate would be closed, but the gate was open. So the dog went out and the neighbors had come back from the market and so you have to understand this is if you went to get meat the meat was fresh it just th there was no packaging or anything so whatever the case the neighbors came back um, they're offloading all the goods or the houseboy is offloading all the goods and apparently our dog went and <laughs> grabbed a piece of meat and disappeared <laughs> and disappeared so I don't, of course, I don't know this at the time until the doorbell rings. And so I go and I see the houseboy. He's, he's saying to me that his mistress, and what he means is the lady of the house, told him to come here and ask us to let him ask our dog to give him back the meat. And of course, I mean, there's no chance of this happening. And it was just that this, it was so ridiculous. Of course, there's no, I mean, you can't talk to a dog. The dog it took the meat because it wanted to eat it and I'm sure the meat was gone by that time I never saw that meat again we we did have to give them back uh, some meat <laughs> but it's this idea of this I, I I think I can't imagine the conversation the kid had this houseboy had with the lady I mean surely she knew there's no way he could communicate with the dog and yet she sends him out I guess she was just so infuriated or whatever, I don't know what I would do in the same circumstances, but it was a kind of funny thing. And of course, his face was so sad, he looked so incredibly sad. And, <laughs> and I know, yeah, I'm, I'm not laughing, yeah, it was just so bizarre that I, I have to laugh. Sometimes you do um, get things like that.